Hello. Hello. Привіт. Bonjour. Ciao. Привіт. Sin ciao. Uh, Japanese. Uh, konnichiwa. Uh, Kamarjoba. Mashaban. Grüezi. If I were to continue to greet you in all languages that we currently know, I would probably need to go 7,140 more times. And only 500 of those languages are currently covered by uh, Unicode, which you think, if you think about it, is, it's quite a lot, right? But I would like to start with stating the fact that I'm actually a very privileged person not just because of the fact that I have the honor to stand here and give a talk to such an awesome audience, but also because of the fact that my audience and I speak English. Yet four out of five, roughly speaking, people in, on, on planet Earth don't. And yet most of the code and programs we write in English. My name is Roman Sharkov. I'm a software engineer at the Scion Association. And at the Scion Association, we are building the open source implementation of the uh, Scion next generation internet architecture, which is primarily focusing on critical systems right now. If you are uh, a uh, client of a Swiss bank, you are already using Scion. In order, uh, well, first, um, uh, I'm going to give a talk about internationalization today, which is a natural follow-up uh, to my talk about uh, building uh, GUIs and in particular web applications in Go. And before, before we start, uh, I would like to refer to uh, this wonderful video from Tom Scott uh, about internationalization on YouTube at on the Computer File channel. And that phrase was really encouraging to me. There, there are several uh, several hard problems when designing software and internationalization is one of the worst. So in order, ah, yeah, first a disclaimer. I'm not in any way an expert in this area. It's, it's huge. Uh, I did this not because it is easy, but because I thought it would be easy. And uh, AI is taking over, so it might not even be necessary in a couple of years. Uh, so, uh, in order to demonstrate to you a somewhat realistic example of, a, of internationalization where it would actually make sense in Go, I founded this wonderful bank uh, under, uh, registered under, under the name Credit uh, Squeeze. And uh, in order to save money, uh, I decided this bank is only going to be accessible via CLI, okay? Uh, in fact, it's all open source, uh, and this is the source. Uh, first, we load some data, we greet the user, we actually properly select the plural form when we have more notification than one, and we show the last transaction, the account balance, some dates and stuff. Well, our little gopher here, uh, he is pretty fine with that application because he's an English speaker. But uh, Elfriede Müller is not particularly uh, does not particularly like it because for her it's gibberish and uh, there's obvious problems with my bank. I could of course just define a few uh, hard-coded uh, translations to some of the languages, to some of the code, uh, some of the texts in my application by simply checking for the number of cards and then use the, uh, the, the right plural form for that. But you see for English and German, it, it might be working, but for Ukrainian, it definitely doesn't. You see, um, in German and English, uh, whenever we approach the number two, we start using cards, and then we just continue. In Ukrainian, in other Slavic languages, once we approach the number five, we actually start a th to use a third form. And it gets even crazier than that. Luckily, luckily, we don't have to think about it that much anymore because the CLDR exists, the Unicode Common Locale Data Repository, which defines six plural forms that are common to the 500 languages they know, yet not all of the languages implement all of the forms. For example, here, Ukrainian implements one, few, many, other, and uh, we actually get XML and JSON files from, uh, from the Unicode Consortium which def uh, that define 
what form to pick for what particular number. And this is not even crazy. The Arabic version or Arabic version uh, actually uses all six. Well, in order to make my banking application a bit more accessible to the outer world, I decided to try and use a couple of these very well-known internationalization libraries out there. Uh, yet, since this is a lightning talk, I will not go into detail and just like over uh, give you an overview of what I didn't like. Uh, some features were missing, and I absolutely hate message keys, uh, which is what I discovered, because Naming is hard, and naming every single text in my application is even harder. So this is not really what I, what I like to spend my time with. And uh, they often use custom uh, translation file formats encoded in JSON or YAML or TOML, which is suboptimal. And uh, there is no code generation, no linting. Uh, sometimes it's also poor in terms of developer experience and even runtime performance. Uh, especially considering that when I tested Nick Snyder's Go 18N for one single uh, translation, it cost me about 10 allocations, which I consider a bit too much. So uh, I decided since there is such a mess, I need to contribute my shit to it, and uh, concluded this list. So first of all, I wanted no keys. I wanted text in the source code so I can read the source code and make sense of it. I wanted to extract those texts like new get text does and I want to lint the code while I am extracting to check that everything is correct and I want to generate the translation files in, uh, w into well adopted standard formats uh, and optionally generate Go code for optimal performance and also maybe automatically translate using LLMs maybe. And so I built this tool called Localize. It's on my GitHub, but I won't advertise it because, spoiler alert, it failed. Uh, what it did, though, is you define texts uh, by calling specific methods on the localizer. And then the localize extraction tool would gather those messages and produce so-called PO files. PO files are a very old standard from the new text uh, uh, set of tools. And then it would produce the bundle, uh, which is Go code, which then feeds right into your application and provides translations. And then you can also use any kind of GUI, like PoEdit, WebLate, whatnot, to uh, work with your translation files. I discovered a little later, which was Monday, I guess, uh, that new get text is a pretty, pretty old format. It's still alive and well, but it's 35 years old and CLDR is just 21 years old and they play different games. You see the plural forms, they mostly match, but not completely. For some languages, they don't. Like CLDR for Ukrainian defines three forms. New get text only three, uh, four forms. New get text only three. So there's a clear mismatch. And once I started to debug a, a, a bug, a translation bug I had, I realized I, it's unfixable because there's fundamental mismatches between the formats. And uh, here we go. This is a so called PO killer message because this message here, she translated one message in two folders marked red is untranslatable with PO files at all because you have two plurals. You need to split it up into two separate messages and then translate those separate messages, but that might break the context between them and in some, lang in some languages that might break the sentence. Yeah, uh, and then there is genders. If you look at the Ukrainian version, for example, Vona preklala, Vin preklav, they are different. So the words depend on what gender is referred to. And PO files don't have such a concept at all. They only know plural forms. So yeah, uh, after one and a half uh, weeks wasted on this uh, uh, little package of mine, I realized that this was a pretty successful failure. Uh, and it was successful in the way that uh, I actually managed to learn a lot and get a lot of insights 
and uh, get even more motivation to uh, make a second launch. Uh, and this is how yesterday I uh, discovered the ICU, the Unicode component for Unicode, uh, the international uh, components for Unicode. And the ICU, um, it can actually manage translating that very difficult sentence in many, many languages. But you can probably tell why I don't like it either. It's a bit on the complex side. If you want to translate this sentence into English, this is how it would look in the, in the source code. And this is a big, big, big no-no. So even if you strap the whole translation into all different plural forms stuff, and you keep only one uh, for plural form and gender form, you still end up with a pretty unreadable message. But uh, I already have some ideas, and I discussed it with a friend of mine who worked with Qt, and they translated, they used ICU messages for translation. It turns out it came to a pretty similar concept that they used before, which might look a bit more promising, and which is what I'm currently wasting my free time on. That is pretty much it. Thank you very much. If you are very interested in this topic, please talk to me.